back in the house, so we have a no heat and no cool call. Apparently the system's not working at all, so when we hit power, this is a Daikin by the way, doesn't give us any options. Okay, looks like we can cycle through everything else. Uh, yeah, all right, cool, but I'm not getting any error codes, so we'll go ahead and we're going to reset the power to the system, uh, cycle the power, get it to recon reconnect, but we'll probably have some kind of communication problem, so let's see what's up. All right, so we're at the outdoor unit. We got some flashing lights, so we want to go ahead and pull up our, uh, our uh, error code history. So what we're going to do is we find this here. The middle button's recall, we're going to push and hold it down until it shows uh, 100. It's in recall, error, error recall mode, so we're going to push the button to cycle through. So we have an E51. So I got my error chart right here. So an E51 is an ODCOM error. So let's see. Thermostat fault. Uh, this indicates potential communication issues have been defected by the outdoor circuit board. Uh, let's see, possible causes, communication wiring disconnected, uh, corrective actions, check connection wiring, repair as needed. Okay, so if we want to keep cycling, we just keep hitting the recall button. Now that we're back on this page, this is basically back to the main page. We want to get out of it, so we just hit the learn button and that will put us back in normal mode. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and kill the power to the indoor or the outdoor unit. Uh, we're going to check our connection. So this is our thermostat connection right here. Okay, and that's the DC voltage. Uh, and then we'll check the inside connections as well, as well as the thermostat wires. Alrighty, well, this is stupid. So we have shielded wiring from the indoor to the outdoor, and then our thermostat just has standard thermostat wiring. It's like, why did you even bother with the shielding wiring? So the way this works is you, um, you'll actually splice the thermostat wire into the line going from the outdoor or from the indoor to the outdoor. Uh, and it's like a little communication network. Um, so you have one and two, which is your data, data in, data out, and then R and C. And that's just, you know, that's just the power up your thermostat. So the R and C... I'm assuming is just gonna power up our stat, right? And then we just have one and two going to the outdoor and the indoor. So let's see here. So we have, where is our, okay, so this is our shielded. So it's black and red, uh, black and red. So the black is going into the yellow. All right. And then the red is going into the white. Okay, and that's one and two. So we want to make sure that this is matching. So black and red is, so let me see. So black is going into yellow, which is one. So that means black should be one and red will be two. Okay, let's make sure that matches outside. Okay, so we're at the outdoor unit. Um, so black is one, and that's connected to the black wire, and red is two, which is connected to the gray. So if we look at this, we can see our black is one and our gray is two, so that matches. So now let's go check the thermostat. All right, so let's check our thermostat. Data one is yellow, data two is white. So that seems to be good. So I don't know if you guys notice what I'm noticing, but uh, these thermostat wires look different than what's down inside the indoor unit. I mean, they're definitely regular thermostat wires, but the gauge is thinner. Yeah, I bet you there's a splice somewhere. Let's go downstairs and see if we can find it. All right, so our thermostat wire goes back here. Ah, surprise, surprise, there's our splice. So they reuse the existing thermostat wire. Um, 
generally when you're doing communication like this, it's always a good idea to use a shielded cable, which they did go into the outdoor unit. But you got to use it on the entire system. It's the network. And you definitely want... <sighs> You want to minimize the amount of splices. Now, splicing into this, that's totally fine. That's what it says to do in the manual. Personally, I would have shoved it in the little, you know, I would have shoved them in there. But it says you can actually splice it. But uh, generally, you want to have one straight splice. So I'm going to take all this tape off and just check these connections and uh, see what we can do there. And then I'm going to see if I can pull some of this up through. Because if I can, I'm going to recommend we run a new shielded wire but uh yeah all right so i was able to pull it out it felt like it went pulled all the way through so i have this here so i don't pull it through the wall but i made a little mark here i don't know if you can see that um but uh we'll see if i can pull it back from the other side if that's the case i can tie the new wire to this one and then just pull it all the way through theoretically the second option is the thermostat is up right up there on that wall. The furnace is behind this wall, so I could put it here or here. Worst case scenario. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that. Let's see if it moves. Okay. All right, so there's no staples. So we could potentially run a new wire. So that's good, good to know. Look at that, now we have a communication there. All right. Cool. So when it gives us a communication error according to this, uh, let me see here. So I have the manual here. Red is communications. Unknown packet is received. You press the learn button. All right, let's do that. Alrighty, so our learn button is the one all the way to the left. I pushed it. Let's see if that did anything. That did not appear to do anything. Let's try a long hold. Alrighty, so um, I hit the learn button, as you saw. Let's see if that did anything. Now we have everything. Let's try to get it to heat, see if it stays working. Right, and crank up our temperature. Sweet. All right. Now we got to put that panel back on and see what's up. All right. So I have E, or I have the uh, unit calling for heat now. This is displaying a active code of E60. All right. So I just got off the phone with tech support, and they're telling me that there's not supposed to be any splices. In that we actually have to put both conductors into that connector on the inside unit. So according to the manual, it says that you can splice the thermostat into the comm wire from the outdoor to the indoor, and that's fine. But they're telling me that they found that that actually is a problem. So what we need to do is we need to run shielded wire to that thermostat, and then we'll basically spin the two conductors together from the outdoor and the thermostat and shove them into that connector in the indoor unit. And that should fix our problems. Another thing they said that there's these little dip switches on here where if you're having this issue, see that dip switch right there? Um, that's going to be D DS or yeah, DS2. Those are need to be both off, uh, which they're on, or both of them are off. And then DS1 right here, that's all supposed to be both off. Um, I guess some of them, according to the manual, it tells you to turn them off in certain situations, but apparently that's wrong. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and see if I can get some shielded wire here and we're gonna try to run it. I already uh, verified that I can actually move the wire through the wall. So I'm gonna attach the new wire to the old wire and then pull it through hopefully without any snags. So anyway, uh, let's see what's up. So tech support said wire nuts are bad. So this was slightly too short where it was tying into these two wires here. So we're going to actually plug this directly into that. So I actually crawled under the house uh, because there was a little bit of, as you saw, there was a little bit of um, slack inside the furnace. So I basically just slid, slid it all over so I could make it long enough to reach. So we're going to plug that straight into the connector. And then I got someone on the way to bring me some uh, shielded cable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run a new wire to that thermostat. And then we're going to weave the wire, the new one, 
into this and then stick it into this. Uh, even though the the manual says specifically don't do that, they're telling me that that's, that's wrong. So um, we're going to go ahead and attach our new wire to this wire and pull it up from the top. So while I'm waiting for them to deliver my wire, I'm getting this all prepped and ready. All right, so I got my, strand, or my shielded cable attached to my old cable. So we're going to pull it up through there and then, uh, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't get hung up in it. I also have the wires tied up together inside there. So once we get her through, we'll cut it. I'll cut all that off because it's all messed up. But yeah, ready. And there's my splice. Whew. All right, and get me plenty of slack. All right, cool. That went w w really well. So we got the new wire in. Whew. Whew. I was so worried I was going to get hung up then I really would have been screwed. Uh, but yeah. Nice, so we're gonna go ahead and start getting stuff connected, and yeah. All right, we got this wired. So now we just need to wire up the rest of the unit, and then hopefully she works. What we're gonna do here is, you can see that I've kind of spread these out. I'm gonna try to intertwine them and twist them together. Uh, and then once they're all together, we'll, you know, s stick it in that connector. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right, and that's our finished product right there. So now it's like one wire. All right, so we got everything in there nice and tight. Uh, so our white is our R, our green is our C, black is data one, red is data two. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and plug this back in there. Okay, and then we'll secure this later. All right, and then we'll secure all that later. Uh, we just want to get it going first, so I need to connect the outdoor now. All right, moment of truth. We're powering everything on. I'll turn on the outdoor unit first. All right, so let's see what's up. All right, she's booting up. So we started with three splices, and now we're down to no splices. So hopefully this fixes our issue. So once this thing boots up, I'm going to let it chill for maybe five, ten minutes, let it reconnect and whatnot so while that's happening i'll clean up all my my mess and stuff and then we'll go from there okay so i put it in heat mode and it did absolutely nothing but then the outdoor unit gave me a code of e60 uh, e60 is no heat pump heat warm up uh, no heat pump heating need warming up on compressor to run properly Need two hour power on. Need heat up on compressor. Wait two hours after turn on power on outdoor unit. Use secondary heat source. Okay, so, um, and then it locks out and turns everything off. Probably because it's on standby. It's waiting for it to heat up. So we might be okay because I'm actually getting stuff. So what I'm going to do now is... We're gonna try to see if we can get it to cool. So it's 66 in here. So I have it in cooling. It wouldn't run because it was just too cold in here. So I found this spot heater, so I'm blowing hot air on it. That's why it's not actually 80 in here, but I figure that should get it to come on, but it's still not doing it. According to this, it is actually cooling. You can see it's blue. It's got a little blue light on the bottom, fancy, but it's not, there's no air circulation and the compressor's not kicking on. So let's see what's up. Oh, well, the blower is doing something. I can hear it clicking. Make sure the filter is clean. Nope. Okay, filter is nasty. I probably should have checked that first, but I didn't. Let's see, when did they change that? 21. Good lord, no wonder it's having problems. All right, she's back up and running. Uh, so that E60 was just because the compressor was too cold. Um, so I was able to, it tells you you have to wait two hours, but I was able to warm it up with a, uh, a heat gun, and now it's kicking on. Ooh, it feels nice. So yeah, so anyway, if you come across this situation, uh, get rid of any splices, make sure everything's shielded, 
and uh, go from there. So yeah, this was a good one. So hopefully this helps you out if you come across this situation. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.